hello guys this is your modern day spokesman and welcome back to the channel if you are new to the channel welcome uh, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to give the video the thumbs up if you like it uh, so guys today's tutorial we're going to be looking at the concept of materiality in auditing so by the end of this uh, tutorial or lesson rather you guys are going to be able to understand what uh, materiality is the planning materiality, the, the stages, the processes, and uh, the details that we need to look at, and also how to calculate materiality. So materiality is an auditing concept or accounting concept relating to the importance or significance of an amount, transaction, or discrepancies. You can refer to the International Standards on Auditing 200 for more information on that. So I'd like you to note the following, right? The objective of an audit of financial statements is to enable the auditor to, to express an opinion whether the financial statements are prepared in material respects, right? So mat materiality basically, as an example, I'd say if a company, right, uh, is looking at its receipts and, and, and accruals, right, and they find that they... They are, they, are, they, they are unable to locate a receipt maybe for stationery, maybe costing 15 rands or 20 rands. I don't think that would really impact the, the, the posting of the financial statement, especially in a large company generating millions of rands uh, uh, in, its, in its revenue stream. So that's, that's not material at all. So when we look at materiality, we also need to look at misstatements. This is going to pop up a lot when you're, when you're doing your auditing studies. Information in the financial statement that is sufficiently incorrect that it may impact the economic decision of someone relying on those statements, right? So a misstatement could be an incorrect uh, sales revenue balance. Uh, it could be an incorrect... Uh, cost of sales so imagine the revenue is overstated and a potential investor is looking at the statement and they're thinking that they're, they're going to be making money so that actually uh, that actually impacts the decision making of the person using them they might want to invest thinking that the company is making money or even external users such as banks might grant loans to institutions or entities thinking that there's money being made if the material uh, misstatement is big enough to cause those kinds of uh, impacts right so some of the reasons that we have for this material misstatements some of it could be due to fraud some of it could be due to an error maybe and you know an unexperienced uh, accountant or bookkeeper, or sometimes it could be an omission by mistake. And uh, just to look at some of the types of uh, misstatements that you can get, you've got the factual, the judgmental, and the projected. So uh, now that you know what uh, materiality is, we need to go deeper into it. Now we have something called planning materiality. These are misstatements, amount or amounts which uh, the auditor sets at the planning stages of an audit based on the materiality to financial statements, right? Uh, with regards to what the auditor thinks will, will actually be material on the particular financial statements. Now, something to note is that once the auditor identifies and assesses the financial statements materiality, the auditor sets the performance materiality. In other words, the tolerable misstatements, things that we can accept uh, which will not cause or impact uh, uh, the, the decision maker or someone who's going to be using the statements to make decisions. So these are mistakes we can tolerate, right? Like you can, you know, you can tolerate to lose uh, one rand if, if you've got 10,000 rands. It's, it's something you can tolerate. But if you're going to be losing 500 rands if you have 10,000, might not be so uh, insignificant. So now, this, on this side, we're going to be looking at the calculation of the materiality. You should note, however, that uh, the planning materiality must be larger than the performance materiality. The reason for this is that the planning materiality is the amount, to the, is the amount that is material to the financial statement as a whole. This is the amount that we consider to be material on the financial statements as a whole. And when I refer to financial statements, I'm, yes, I'm talking about the profit or loss statement. I'm talking about the financial position, the changes in equity statements, and also the cash flow statements, right? So I'm not referring to just one particular statement. Uh, so to the financial, uh, financial statements, right? Uh, the planning materiality is... Oh, sorry about that, guys. So just to recap on that one, right? Just to recap that one. 
we are going to have our we're going to have our planning materiality higher than our performance materiality it's going to be higher it's going to be higher than our planning materiality because uh, the performance materiality looks at the overall materiality of the financial statements right that is expected to have happened in the financial statements alone or combined because you can have small misstatements right but in aggregate they could be material or could be material as a single unit right so these are some of the quality qualitative factors that are used in the planning materiality here you can highlight uh, i have highlighted uh, them here zero comma five to one percent of sales revenue one percent to two percent of total assets one percent to two percent of gross profit two percent to 5% of shareholders equity and the last one is uh, 5 to 10% of the net profit So as an example, right? Uh, let's say we have a gross profit of 7 million, right? Uh, in this particular example, the firm uh, applies the following percentages uh, in its gross profit materiality calculations, right? So now something else that I should also bring your attention to is the inherent risk, right? the inherent risk and the materiality set have an inverse relationship which means when the other one is high the other one will be low if the other one is low the other one will be high right so for example um we've got uh 0.05 percent and we that's a high risk and uh this is the inherent risk and the percentages are the mat mat materiality sorry about that <laughs> yeah and uh, the medium risk one percent which is a figure of seventy thousand and the low risk it's forty thousand so now for you to understand this right guys you should always keep in mind that the inherent risk has an inverse relationship. Now, what do I mean it's an inverse? When the other one is up, the other one is down. So, for example, if the inherent risk is high, if the inherent risk is high, uh, we have to set the materiality risk, the, materi the materiality a level very low. For example, guys, for example, say you have a bank account, right? You have a bank account with bank a bank b and bank c so bank a so bank a has security problems right hackers can access your funds easily right so in that bank account you'd make sure that you put the smallest amount of money that you can so even if you lose it it won't be too much of a problem so that little example applied here simply means that when we set our materiality low that means we are trying to limit the number of errors that we can get that's why we put the amount so low that uh, we try to minimize the errors that we can tolerate. But if the the the, the inherent risk is medium, let's say seventy thousand, you can see the amount has increased, right? That means we can tolerate a bit more, you know, a risk, or we can ex accept uh, more errors in the in the statements. So, as in the case of Bank B, if Bank B is a medium security, you know, you can actually afford to pump up a bit of money because you know, yeah, you can accept that kind of risk. Now, if the inherent risk is very low, your materiality level increases because now you can accept more risk, right? You can accept more errors. This is why you put the amount very high. So that's it in a nutshell, guys. Uh, check out my next video. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like it or a thumbs down if you don't like it. Uh, yeah. And uh, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Nah.